today's video we are going to get milling up all the shelving material and the supports for the shelves and then start the joinery. So let's get started. All right, that whole stack up there is all for the shelves here. So I have a lot of milling to do, so we're just going to skip that part. I'm going to show you a couple of uh, gratuitous shots of me milling up lumber and then we'll get on to the joinery. All right, before we get to the gratuitous milling shots, I took the time to lay out from my cut list all the parts that I need and marked them very clearly to make sure I had everything figured out and dialed in that I'm not gonna be short anything because when I mill these, I wanna make sure all the parts are the exact same thickness. So I wanna mill them together because they're gonna be put together by half lap. So if one's a little off and I go to cut all those uh, joints the same, they're not gonna fit together. All right, let's get set up here to cut these guys to rough length and then we'll get ready to mill them up to thickness. All right, so before I send this through the planer, I'm gonna transfer the letters onto the end of the board here. So that way, after I plane this off, I don't have to try to figure out my puzzle again. It'll be really easy to know which part is which. All right, I got my shells cut to length, ripped to width, and now it's time to join them together. And they're all gonna get joined together with a half flap joint. Uh, and I wanna make sure that they all stay in perfect line because if one joint gets a little bit out, uh, it's gonna bind up when I try to assemble them. So to do that, we're gonna make a jig. All right, so part of the decorative feature of this shelf is that each shelf has a different spacing. So I went ahead and I cut spacers for each different uh, spacing of the shelves. And then we're gonna use these as our guys to cut the dados. So let's first start out down here at the bottom. All right, so this guy is my longest work piece. It's the longest uh, shelf support. This is gonna be my fence that's gonna butt up against that to uh, give me something to register on every single piece. This first one here is going to be my uh, spacer to space me off the floor. I'm just going to put just a little dab of glue in here. All right, make sure I'm square and flush to the top and flush to the side. All right, then this piece is going to act as a stop here. All right, so this guy's here, so when I swap my next work piece in, it can just butt up against this stop and this stop, and then I know I'm uh, registering off the same spot of the jig, so all my uh, data should line up, all my shelves should line up perfectly. All right, so I'm gonna use my actual workpiece as my spacer, so that way I know 100% sure that I'm cutting the right uh, depth of dado. Flush it to the back, and make sure I'm pushing tight against this guy. All right, as I go, I have this guy clamped down, I'm making sure I can push hard against the last one that I installed, making sure my stop is pressed tight against my workpiece so that way everything should uh, line out nice and square. All right, and I'm just going to work my way all the way down. All right, so most everything is going to register off the bottom down there except for the last couple of pieces that are kind of floating out here in the air. So I am going to put a stop up here at the top. I'll be able to register the exact same spot off the top here. All right, so there is her jig. Each slot is a dado for the shelf. All right, so this is my workpiece and I got my template on top of my workpiece and I'm using this clamp to clamp it tight to the fence. And then of course, for safety, I have the whole thing clamped to the workbench. The first router bit we're going to use has this bearing on it to ride here on my uh, template and it's just going to cut out a really shallow dado for the shelves to slide into and then we'll come back and cut the half lap with another uh, router bit. Alright, so I got my dados cut in my workpiece, but now I want to cut a half lap in here. So to do that, I'm gonna use the same jig, and this will guarantee that I'm lined up. And I have cut a spacer that's gonna drop into each one of these guys that I've measured out to be halfway to the stop point there. All right, so I got them installed. 
Now I'm going to use this router bit with this bearing to trace just like I did before, but now I'm going to flip it over and do it from the other side so that way this uh, bearing bottoms out on my stop here. And that'll be what cuts out my half lap and then I'll just chisel the corner square. All right, there is our completed piece. All the half laps and dados installed on this vertical. So now I'm gonna continue on. I've marked on my template what direction is going up, so that way I know for sure that this is the bottom and this is the stop. And the reason why I did that is because the next decorative piece in the shelf is shorter than the first decorative piece, so I want to make sure I'm always referencing off the bottom and not referencing off the top because then the data's will all be in the wrong spot, of course. All right, and then the third shelf support doesn't actually touch the floor. It's suspended off the top shelf. So to make sure that these two dados line up exactly with the other shelves, I'm going to use the top support and reference off the top for those guys. All right, so for the mating pieces, I have my stop set up here, so I cut all of them at the exact same spot on every single piece, and a data blade set up, so I'm just going to work my way across the shelves uh, with this setup here. All right, so my joints are nice and tight here, and I have a cold, so if you've noticed a voice change here, that is why. Um, I'm going to use my router plane to plane this down here till I get a nice fit so that way it'll slide in there but still be nice and tight. All right, it looks like it's going to go. I'm going to gently tap it. I don't want to force it if it starts to feel like it's getting too snug. I've done that before and I've snapped off this, split off this uh, side here. So I'm just going to go real slow. All right, so I got the case all put together. Every joint is nice and tight fitting. So now it is time to move on to inlaying our segmented ring into uh, the top of it here. So before I do that, I want to make sure that this thing is nice and square because this segmented ring crosses a whole bunch of different members. So if I inlay it in and this is not square yet, it'll lock it in out of square and then I'll be in big trouble. So I'm going to take a few minutes to get this all squared up and then we'll start working on the inlay here. All right, and as I'm squaring it up, I want to pay attention to these two members. They are only jointed in one spot, so it's kind of like a pivot point here, so they wiggle quite a bit. So I want to make sure that these guys are perfectly square and not crooked in here when I do the inlay. So I'm going to build a little jig here to make sure that these are fixed in place, and then I'm going to use that same jig to uh, cut with the router this portion of the inlay into the uh, segmented ring. And then once I have that portion cut into, there's not a really good way to inlay this part into this uh, across here, so then I'll just do that guy by hand. I think it'll be much faster than trying to rig up some kind of router jig for that. All right, so I've marked out where the circle's gonna go, and now I'm just gonna go around and glue across the members to tie them all together across uh, the supports of the shelves. That way I can pull the whole thing out and set it on top of the circle and use it as a routing jig. All right, I got some tape down to make it easier to separate when I'm done. And I'm just going to go around here and I am going to use a lot more blue tape than what I normally do. Because at this stage of the game, if I screw it up, it's a big one. So I don't want it to move at all. I'd rather take a little more time getting it apart when I'm done than have it slip at this point. All right, I have some witness marks on my boards. So I'm going to flip this guy over and hopefully I can lay it down here without screwing up the tape too much and get everything lined up.
All right, so I have a uh, bearing on my router bit to uh, follow along my pattern here, and I'm just gonna go around to each uh, slot to uh, route it out, and just take slow passes as I go until I get down to the depth that I need. All right, we're gonna gently pop this off and then we'll test fit it to see how we did. All right, it looks like everything is lining up really good. There's a couple of joints that need some finessing because they're just a little bit too tight. So I'm gonna do that with a chisel and then we'll scribe in to cut the half lap on these other uh, uh, shelf support members. All right, so now that I got everything fitted in all the way around to transfer the joint to this board so I can cut this half lap out so it'll slide all the way down, I'm just gonna use a marking knife and go around and gently trace each one out. All right, so I'm a little proud of the line on this cut, so I'm just gonna pair it to the line with my chisel. This first cut's gonna be kind of a big one because I got a lot of little bead on the bottom there. Right now I'm eyeballing down my scribe line. All right, so these ends need to have a little slight round over on them, so let's take care of that next. All right, so this shelf is L-shaped, so that makes shipping it a difficult challenge here because it has that extra leg. So I want to make this super easy to ship and easy for the client to uh, reassemble once it's moved to the new location. So I am going to use these Festool things. So Festool has this knockdown hardware stuff uh, that looks like it's way easier to use than anything else you can buy, even better than uh, IKEA stuff. It looks like it's super strong and super easy to use. So I'm going to do a test board just in case uh, so I don't screw it up because uh, the actual installation of it is kind of involved. But once it's, uh, once it's installed and ready to go, uh, the client should just need an Allen wrench to tighten it up. So let's do a, uh, a test run here. All right, so how this system works is you need an 8 millimeter uh, cutter in your domino. You need to set your depth stop to 20 millimeters. And for the side that's going to get these doodads, you need to go in 15 millimeters. And on the side that's going to get these guys, you need to go in 28 millimeters. So I'm going to put this guy on the side that has the grain that's going this direction opposed to this direction because 
when you put these posts in here, you tighten them up, it pulls this guy in and spreads this out. So if you're going with the grain, there's a potential that you could split the grain. I don't know if it's strong enough to split the grain, but I don't want to take any chances. So I'm going to put this guy going uh, perpendicular to the grain. All right, so I have my layout line here. I have my depth set to 15 millimeters. I'm using the smallest, uh, narrowest setting. The other side, I'm going to switch it to 28 millimeters. So now this is my face side, so I'm gonna flip it over because we need to drill a hole for this guy to drop into. So this guy has this little guy on the bottom here to line it up and also allows you to attach your vacuum hose to. So I'm gonna clamp this guy to the bench. Make sure I'm pushed all the way down and tighten this guy up. So I'm fully seated. Now Festool makes a uh, bit specifically for this function and it has a depth stop on it. So once you drill through and you bottom out, you know you're at the right depth. And before I do that, I'm going to hook up my vacuum hose. Turn it back on. All right, there we go. So threaded side up. I'm gonna push one of these retainer clips in here. Drop that guy in the hole, give it a gentle tap. All right, and then this guy go in here. Gentle tap. All right, so now this is my face side and I want this divot to face down because I want to be able to drive this set screw in here. So this has a little set screw and that set screw is what pushes into here and pulls it tight. And so this is facing, facing down so you don't see it. So I want to make sure that this divots down. So I'm just going to put that guy in there, tighten it up. And just gently snug it. Once it starts to give me a lot of resistance, I'm going to stop and just make sure that I'm facing down. If you over tighten, I'm willing to bet that you could snap that stub off. All right, so now they go together like that. This guy over here. All right. And that's just one connector. I'd recommend, and they probably do too, to at least do two and a domino, but that is a pretty solid tight connection. So I'm gonna set up to do this exact same operation on all my pieces to connect my L uh, shelf together. All right, so I'm gonna lay these guys out and I'm going to make sure that I cut all the 50 millimeters ones and then switch my depth stop and then go back and cut all the 28 millimeter ones in the other piece. So that way I'm not switching back and forth because I just know myself that if, uh, as I go along, if I get distracted or start thinking about something else that at some point I'm gonna forget to flip my depth stop back and I'm gonna plunge the wrong depth into one of these, creating a lot more work for myself later on down the road. I'm gonna do all the 15s first, then do the 28s. So hopefully save myself uh, that little bit of insanity. All right, the Festool connectors are doing their job. It looks really good. Now, the last thing before I spray some finish on it is to do some light sanding. All right, now I did do an initial sanding before I started uh, my joinery and we worked really hard to make sure all the joints are nice and tight on every single one. So the last thing I wanna do is do an aggressive sanding, removing material uh, that could create that joint to open up. All right, I know there's a lot of videos here on YouTube where they try to rake sandpaper and review different types of sandpaper and tell you which sandpaper is the best. And I think those videos are misleading. They all use the matrix of which sandpaper removes the most material the fastest, so which sandpaper is the most efficient at removing materials. But in this stage of the game, 
we are not looking at removing material efficiently. We want to polish the material. If we remove a bunch of material, you're going to end up with gaps in your joints. So if you have to remove a bunch of material, you might want to step back in your process and make sure you have really sharp blades in your planer or you're using a smoothing plane or a card scraper. There are much better ways of removing large amounts of material to get to a finished surface than there is sandpaper. Sandpaper should be your last, your last thing that you do, and it's just a light sanding. It's, the point isn't to remove a whole bunch of wood. So, so be careful of those reviews. Those could be misleading and just causing you to create gappy joinery. So last thing I'm gonna do is get this thing in the spray booth and get some finish on it and show you what it looks like. All right, so I taped off all the joints before I sprayed a finish on it, and so now I just need to go along and remove all the tape, and that way my glue has a good uh, clean piece of wood to bond to, because the glue doesn't bond very well to finish. All right, let's put this thing together. There's lots of pieces and lots of moving parts here, so I am going to use a slow set epoxy to get it assembled so I don't have to uh, rush around or have a part seize up on me before I'm ready to have it uh, set in place. All right, and here we go. Thanks for watching.